Don't Grow Old is the title, on the death of my father, Louis Ginsburg, who died in 1976, May, June. So these are poems written uh, during his uh, decline, at the, uh, uh, quite an old age. And then his death was July 7th, and the next day I got on a plane and went back to Newark Airport to the funeral. I'd been taking care of him with Peter Orlovsky during the uh, spring and went off to the Naropa Institute Jack Kerouac School of Disembodied Poetics for a couple of weeks, thinking he'd last the summer, but he didn't. Old Poet, poetry's final subject glimmers months ahead. Tender mornings, Patterson roofs snow-covered, vast sky over a city hall tower, east side parks, grass terraces, and tennis courts beside the Passaic River. Parts of ourselves, gone. Sister Rose's apartments, brown corridored high schools, too tired to go out for a walk, too tired to end the war, too tired to save body, too tired to be heroic. The real close at hand is the stomach, liver, pancreas, rib, coughing up gastric saliva. Marriages vanished in a cough. Hard to get up from the easy chair. Hands white, feet speckled, a blue toe, stomach big, breasts hanging thin, hair white on the chest. Too tired to take off shoes and black socks. He'll see no more Times Square honky-tonk movie marquees, bus stations at midnight, nor the orange sun ball rising through treetops east toward New York's skyline. His velvet armchair facing the window will be empty. He won't see the moon over house roofs or sky over Patterson streets. Wasted arms, feeble knees, 80 years old, hair thin and white, cheek bonier than I'd remembered, head bowed on his neck, eyes opened now and then. He listened. I read my father Wordsworth's intimations of immortality. Trailing clouds of glory do we come from God, who is our home. That's beautiful, he said, but it's not true. When I was a boy, he said, we had a house on Boyd Street, Newark. The backyard was a big empty lot full of bushes and tall grass. I always wondered what was behind those trees. When I grew older, I walked around the block and found out what was back there. It was a glue factory. 28 years before, on the living room couch, he stared at me. I said, I want to see a psychiatrist. I have sexual difficulties, homosexuality. I'd come home from troubled years as a student. This was the weekend I would talk with him. A look startled his face. You mean you like to take men's penises in your mouth? Equally startled, no, no, I lied. That isn't what it means. <laughs> now he lay naked in the bath, hot water draining beneath his shanks. Strong-shouldered Peter, once ambulance attendant, raised him up in the tiled room. We toweled him dry, arms under his, bathrobe over his shoulder. He tottered through the door to his carpeted bedroom, sat on the soft mattress edge, exhausted, and coughed up watery phlegm. We lifted his swollen feet, talcumed white, put them through pajama legs, tied the cord around his waist and held the nightshirt sleeve open for his hand, slow. Mouth drawn in, his false teeth in a dish, he turned his head round, looking up at Peter to smile ruefully, don't ever grow old. At my urging, my eldest nephew came to keep his grandfather company, maybe sleep overnight in the apartment. He had no job and was homeless anyway. All afternoon, he read the papers and looked at old movies. Later, dusk, television silent, we sat on a soft pillowed couch. Louis sat in his easy chair that swiveled and could lean back. So what kind of job are you looking for? 
dishwashing, but someone told me it makes your hand skin scaly red. And what about Office Boy? His grandson had finished high school with marks too poor for college. It's unhealthy inside air-conditioned buildings under fluorescent light. The dying man looked at him, nodding at the specimen. He began his advice. You might be a taxi driver, but what if a car crashed into you? They say you can get mugged, too. Or you could get a job as a sailor, but the ship could sink, you could get drowned. <laughs> Maybe you should try a career in the grocery business, but a box of bananas could slip from the shelf, you could hurt your head. <laughs> or if you were a waiter, you could slip and fall down with a loaded tray and have to pay for the broken glasses. Maybe you should be a carpenter, but your thumb might get hit by a hammer. Or a lifeguard, but the undertow at Belmar Beach is dangerous, and you could catch a cold or a doctor, but sometimes you could cut your hand with a scalpel that had germs. You could get sick and die. Later, in bed after twilight, glasses off, he said to his wife, why doesn't he comb his hair? It falls all over his eyes. How can he see? Tell him to go home soon. I'm too tired. Will that happen to me? Of course, it'll happen to thee. Will my arms wither away? Yes, your arm hair will turn gray. Will my knees grow weak and collapse? Your knees will need crutches, perhaps. Will my chest get thin? Your breasts will be hanging skin. Where will go my teeth? You'll keep the ones beneath. What will happen to my bones? They'll get mixed up with stones. Continuing, don't grow old. Near the scrapyard, my father will be buried. Near Newark Airport, my father will be under a Winston cigarette sign buried on exit 14 Turnpike, New Jersey South. Through the toll gate, service road one, my father buried, past merchants refrigerating concrete on the cat-tailed marshes, past the Budweiser Anheuser Busch Brick Brewery, in Benai Israel Cemetery behind a green painted iron fence where there used to be a paint factory and farms, where Pennick makes chemicals now under the Penn Central Power Station, transformers and wires, at the borderline between Elizabeth and Newark, next to Aunt Rose Gatamac, near Uncle Harry Meltzer, one grave over from Abe's wife Anna, my father will be buried. What's to be done about death? Nothing. Nothing. Stop going to school number six, Patterson, New Jersey in 1937. Freeze time tonight with a headache at quarter to two a.m. Not go to father's funeral tomorrow morn. Not go back to Naropa, teach Buddhist poetics all summer. Not be buried in the cemetery near Newark Airport someday. <laughs> <laughs>